Well, hello and welcome to our Pastor's Bible Study. Um, I'm Pastor Smith, we got Pastor Josh here, and we've got the Forgiving Challenge. So, hopefully you guys have these books and you're following along with us. We are, uh, what, what day? It's, it's the 10th, right, here? I mean, as you're watching this, maybe it's a different day, but here as we're recording, um, day 10, and yeah, we're a quarter of the way through the whole thing. Mm. Um, so what what we want to do today, uh, well, and I should say also, um, but we did say this last week, but we are kind of pausing the small catechism study. We're, we're not abandoning it, but we, we will return to the Holy Spirit, but we're going to take some time and focus on the forgiving challenge. And so basically we're just going to go through the week that began on Sunday, so the week of sin, <clears throat> And go day by day from what we've covered so far, and uh, we're not we're not going to necessarily read exactly what we've written in our books because uh, you know because in some ways those are those are pretty personal uh, and private things. But uh, we'll talk about some of our reactions, and you know maybe it'll be it'll be fun for all of us to just reflect together on what God's doing through the forgiving challenge here in this week of sin. Um, Pastor Josh, any. Before we get into the nitty-gritty of each day, uh, any high-level observations or just reactions from the book so far? Well, I think, yeah, just talking about sin in general, I think uh, so far this has done a really good job of coming at sin from a few different perspectives. Um, you know, like, like, for example, when we preach, you know, we might try to convince somebody using emotion or we might try to convince somebody using statistics or logic or whatever. And I feel like this kind of has that approach of, you know, trying to get everybody just to the realization that we're sinners, you know. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, might not... Uh, there have been exercises where it's like they, they make you think about what you feel with sin. And then mm -hmm. some of it is just kind of getting you to realize that even if you don't feel it, you know, you're still a sinner. And so I just uh, appreciate that of, like... You know, take out feeling, take out logic, you know, take out whatever you want. Sin covers us all and just, I think, does a good way of, of conveying that message to however people are as far as receiving that message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think that's great. And I, I think for the people that are picking up this book, it could be that there's a, a wide variety of backgrounds, you know, um, you know, I like to think that most of us here at St. Paul, at least, even before picking up this book, we probably realized that we were sinners. Um, but it it also it helps, especially during the season of Lent and we're focusing on the cross and why Jesus had to come and die for us to again and again uh, reflect on our sinfulness and and repent of that um, daily as as we're really supposed to be doing. Uh, but I think you know for for some people though. Yeah, that concept of of needing to be forgiven by God could be a little bit out there, and so I think, yeah, you know, to your point, sin is sort of the great equalizer, and we do, you know, before you can hear the gospel as good news, you have to know that there's bad news that you you cannot reverse on your own, <laughs> yeah, yeah, being your sin. <clears throat> yeah, this probably is, I know this is covering one of the days, but that's something that. My small group talked about last night was just in light of uh, in the in the video, and then and I know at some point in the book, uh, Zach Zander talks about you know thirty or tw I forget the numbers, but like twenty two percent of men, thirty three percent of women mm -hmm. only rely who who count themselves as believing in Jesus. Only that percentage of people rely on Jesus to take care of their sin. And somebody yeah. brought up like, well, what's the point of the gospel? You know, like mm -hmm. if if there's not great sin, there's not great forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> if you can take care of your sin, well, shoot, that's awfully cruel of God to send Jesus to to live a life as a human and to suffer if if He didn't need to. Mm -hmm. You know, if we could take care of sin on yeah. our own, then yeah. then the cross was for nothing. And so mm -hmm. it really does all start with realizing our sin. And if you don't realize your sin, then you don't need to be saved from anything if you mm -hmm. save yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, you have to hear the fullness of the law to 
kind of appreciate the the fullness of the gospel yeah what, what God has actually done for you uh, well why don't we you know we've kind of talked about sin you know a little bit so far but why don't we get deeper into each day in this week of sin uh, so day six and if you have your book you know open it up and, and page through it with us um, I, I didn't know that Simon meant snub nose uh, that was a revelation for me you know I did know I did know Peter you know means rock boulder you know whatever kind of a, a thing but but yeah, it was an interesting, like the title, Snub-Nosed to Big Boulder. I was like, what am I getting myself into on this day? <laughs> um, did you, Did you? well, you probably already knew what your name meant. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, your name is the same as Jesus, yeah. really. Which, yeah. funny story, I remember once when I was, like, so I knew growing up, like, the general, like, meaning of my name, but I didn't know exactly what it meant. Like, I knew it was closely related to, to Jesus. And I was probably in middle school or high school, and I was in standing in line at Walmart with my mom, and there was a lady with her baby standing in front of us, and she's like, she mentioned Joshua, like mm-hmm. that was her son's name, and my mom was like, or, she's like, that's a great name, and the lady's like, yeah, do you know what it means? And I, I kind of froze, and I said, uh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But Jesus means Joshua and Jesus come from the same root, meaning He will save. For those of you who are like, well, what does it mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it is, yeah, I mean, like, Joshua, I mean, it is, it is, yeah, it's Yeshua, and then, you know, we get the Yeshua into Greek is Jesus, and then, yeah, mm-hmm. and then it goes into English as Joshua, yeah, so, yeah, it is, it is the name, the English name for Jesus. Um, but, yeah, and, and my, well, you know, I, I remember, I don't know if you guys, if this will ring a bell with anybody else, but remember, like, if you went into a, a Christian bookstore back in the 90s or probably into, like, the early 2000s, it was just, there would be a whole section of the store just all these religious gifts that had your name and, like, the meaning of your name. And it just seemed like almost every name had some, like, beautiful, like, spiritual meaning to it or something. Like, I remember my, my name... Um, it, it said that my name meant heavenly peace. And I'm like, oh man. Like I've, I'm like, what, you know, so aptly named. No. <laughs> I'm, willing to, I'm willing to bet that Simon did not have a snub nose. No, 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 I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, it didn't, yeah. And then they even said in here, like, it's it's kind of a derivation of Simeon, right? Which is like, um, the God calls or, no, God has heard. Yeah, God which has heard. Which is great. So when I read that, I was like, boy, that's great for. You know, we think about the the song of Simeon. Mm-hmm. You know, oh yeah, just how that fits in. Yeah, that's true. Um, but my name in Spanish, of course, means boss. Jefe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah. So I think it, it is it is always interesting to think about. Yeah, just think about names and the fact. I mean, the fact that you know Zender brings out that Jesus gives Peter this new name. You know, it's. It, it's not like after everything has happened, he's like, "Oh, you know, you were really my rock." Um, he names he names him that at the very beginning. He's hasn't you know Peter hasn't done anything you know good or bad yet, mm-hmm. and he gives him this name. And yeah, I was just thinking about how sometimes I think when when it comes to names, you know, we you know they have a lot of significance. Sometimes we'll name things like in an aspirational way. Or will you know kind of try to speak into existence, I guess, so to speak, some type of identity or, or calling upon someone or ourselves. You know, I don't know. You're not supposed to like give yourself your own nickname or something, but um, <laughs> but names names have a lot of power in the Bible, especially. I mean, and then mm-hmm. you know, sometimes when God changes someone's name, you really take notice of that. Yeah, I think to an extent, like names don't even mean as much to us today. You know, I think like. Mm-hmm. Moses was named because like that's his name was like he was drawn out of the water and that's like mm-hmm. his name literally means like drawn out of the water or, yeah. or Noah Nuach means rest and like mm-hmm. his parents thought maybe this will be like God will send rest that he's been promising mm-hmm. through Noah or you know like yeah. just like they had really deep meanings and now like not that it's necessarily wrong but I feel like we don't necessarily like as a society choose names for meanings we just like mm-hmm. you know what sounds good or yeah. what, you know, goes well with the last name, mm-hmm. or, you know. <laughs> yeah. For yeah, now, us, for, sure. for right now, for us, we've really boxed ourselves in because we want our kids to have B 
biblical names mm-hmm. and both 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 guys in our family have the initials J A G mm-hmm. and both girls in our family have A J G mm-hmm. and so we're really limited to girl is a biblical A yeah. and boy is a biblical J and yeah. there's not many biblical yeah. A names for girls. Yeah, I was going to say you you're pretty good with the biblical J. <laughs> yeah, yeah fine. you're you're fine. You can have several more boys. Yeah. <laughs> but girls, yeah, yeah, you're a little bit a little bit trickier. It's a so. short list. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Any, anything else from from day six, I guess, with the, the names and, like, you know, Peter Peter being called Big Boulder <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> The Rock? I think it was a... I don't remember if it was this day or a different day, but when he talks about, like, uh, being around a bunch of big rocks when he said it. Mm-hmm. I think that's the... I think that's day seven. Okay. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so hold that thought for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, I think it, it invites us to think about our, our own, you know, given name, but then also just the the other names that God gives us, which I guess are kind of like pet name. You know, I mean, like we, he calls us child of God. You know, he calls us, you know, his beloved. You know, there, there's all kinds of things that the, the Bible talks about and just how... God speaks; His word has power, and our and our identity changes uh, in Christ. All right, so that's day six. Day seven, then <clears throat> the title is "Big Boulder or Big Blunder," and we have uh, this really famous confession that Peter makes. And and like you were just saying, yeah, it's on page fifty three of day uh, on day seven. If you're looking in your book. This location there in Caesarea Philippi. Had you heard this before about no. this? Um, you know, there was like this cave, and it was supposed to be maybe like the gates of hell. I don't. Yeah. Know. I mean, I don't know if they literally believe that. Sometimes these things are like legendary. But I, I have heard. I, I did hear this one other time um, when we were in Israel a few years ago. We did not. Our, our trip did not go to Caesarea Philippi. But I had heard. A few months before, we went from another person showing a slide, a picture of like when they had gone to the Holy Land, and they had a picture of this, and it, it really did like take on this this entire like Matthew chapter sixteen and this account, you know, Peter's confession. Then the gates of hell will not overcome the church. Um, it really packs more of a punch. Um, so I want to believe that this is true, <laughs> that, that that they were in this location, and um, I mean, it seems to make sense. I think. You know, you don't always get uh, a geographical location, um, like where they are, where something is happening. So I feel like when they do mention that, it's, a, it's important. Yeah. And 2,000 years later, a lot of these details are lost on us, you know, the American readers. You know, maybe people, you know, in Israel are like, oh, yeah, I still, I still remember that. You know, mm-hmm. I still hear about that legend or whatever that yeah. they thought the gates of hell were right here. Um, and all these rocks around. And, yeah, there's, there's like seven more things going on here than just meets the eye. Yeah. 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 Um so yeah, so what is so what is the what is the rock here? Jesus says, you know, um you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Well, first of all, what did Peter what did Peter say? You know, fill us in a little bit before before what Jesus says here. Yeah, so that's when, you know, Jesus asks, "Who do who do people say that I am? And his disciples say, you know, some say you're a prophet, some say you're Elijah, you know, all these things. And then he turns and he's like, who do you say that I am? And mm-hmm. well, Peter speaks up because, well, that's what he does. Yeah. He says, you are the Christ, son of the living God. Yeah. And um, and so, you know, it, it's, I think it's a, a slight double entendre, mm-hmm. if you would, um, because I think first and foremost, Jesus is saying that this this confession of who Jesus is is uh, what he's going to build the church on. You know, this confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, is that's that's who Jesus is. That's what the the, the church is built upon. But also, like you know, he does as. Uh, Zender said in the video, he does kind of make Peter like 
the first pastor of the church. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's, you know, I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's necessarily wrong to think about that name change, uh, mm -hmm. with the, the rock on this mm -hmm. rock. And so I yeah. think, yeah. uh, it kind of is, is twofold there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, I, I think, I think we have to say, you know, this is in the Catholic church they'll take this passage and you know that's they have this tradition that Peter was like the first pope and so then like you know the all the the lineage of all the popes kind of start with Peter and um we don't have to go too far down that path but but I think but it definitely it definitely shows there is a special like I think you know Zender is right saying that Peter is given a special role in the church here now we know almost verbatim what he says here, he also says um, later on. So he, Jesus will say say the same thing about giving the keys and the, the authority to bind or loose sins uh, to the other disciples too. Um, after he, well, it's on Easter evening, right? When he comes and passes through the walls while the doors are locked. Um, yeah, he breathes on them. And then, uh, yeah, and then, so, so I mean, it's, it's. I guess we wouldn't be saying like Peter's the only one who receives this, but but there is a special significance here. I think after this confession, it's like yeah, that you're going to be kind of like yeah, like a founding pastor in my church that is built on this confession. You mm -hmm. know, you're the yeah, and there's some blurred lines there with the rock, but but yeah, there's a lot there's a lot going on, a lot of imagery and and power. Um, and Peter, I mean, then for the rest of this chapter here in day seven. Then we go to the dark place of the thing. I, I know Peter would probably think, oh, I wish I would, could be best known for my confession of Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. But that's not what he's best known for. Or even, you know, his sermon on Pentecost. Yeah, on Pentecost I'm yeah, sure he right. would take that too. Yeah, but he gets uh, what he's best known for, I, I think most people would probably say, is the denial of Christ. <laughs> And, so, and that great sin, and the rooster crowing, and weeping bitterly, and this just this major failure on his part. And that's kind of what makes him so compelling, I think. Yeah, and again, I don't know if it, it was this day, I think it is, but just, I like how he highlights that, like, you know, especially literature, or, you know, different writings of that time, especially, would not have had like one of the main characters because he talks about like mm -hmm. you know aside from Jesus he's really the only character who's fleshed out yeah uh-huh yeah and you would not have had you would not have painted him as like a buffoon you know mm -hmm. like who constantly is, is failing like you, you would have elevated him and only shown him in positive light mm -hmm. and and so it's very significant the fact that it highlights his failures and yeah. the fact that um, I, I really liked in the video last night. I'm sorry if you've not seen the video, uh, they are <laughs> online, but I know if you've not seen it, we keep referencing it. Um, but <clears throat> Zach Zender talks about the 89th chapter. Yeah. Uh, all four gospels together are 89 chapters, and he talks about how the end of John, John chapter 20, it seems like John is ready to close the book. And then there's mm -hmm. more, and this yeah. is where Jesus uh, restores Peter, mm -hmm. and just the the significance of uh, it, it takes the the focus off of uh, Peter's failure or his his the good that he does, and it puts it on the work of, of Jesus and restoring him and using him despite his failure. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think it is it is relatable when. You see somebody who's not perfect, yeah, and and can say, can look at him and see. So he failed big time. I mm -hmm. failed big time, and yet he's being used. Mm -hmm. So what does that say about me? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and 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 that is all throughout the scriptures. I think if you have the eyes to see it, you see people who are are flawed and failing all the time. But there's something about there's something about Peter that I think, um, and and Zach Zinner kind of references this throughout, um, is that like he was with Jesus, so it's almost like 
like you should have known better or you know I, I don't know like if I was with Jesus I certainly wouldn't have failed the same way I mean yeah I, I would have I would have or done different and the worse things Jesus told him but, like it really yeah like he's like this is gonna happen mm-hmm. and then it not only like it wasn't just a that happened oh no but like the fact that happened three times yeah you, I, I just I think about this all the time like mm-hmm. how did that not click the first or yeah. the second time yeah. like this conversation <laughs> happened less than like seven hours ago like, yeah. oh I know I know I've, I've thought about that, that too in Peter's defense I guess a lot had happened in between Jesus prediction yes. and then yeah you know <laughs> but still you would think maybe it would still be ringing in his ears a little bit mm-hmm. Well, it would be yeah. after that rooster. After, well, that's, and then like, that's like the most, that detail, um, I think it's in, is in Luke's gospel. It, it's only in one of them. Yeah, I think it's in Luke where Jesus turns and looks mm-hmm. at Peter. Like that just like wrecks you when you hear that. Yeah. Um, oof. But then it, it, it makes the, you know, the Jesus restoring him, like you said, even even more powerful at the end mm-hmm. um but yeah but the now this one i don't know if you guys if you guys have done day seven this challenge threw me for a loop a little <laughs> bit so like you know having to write your <laughs> write your funeral eulogy um i didn't i don't know i did not enjoy this one no. i have to be honest about that because well first of all i mean my life is so accomplished i needed more life no i'm just kidding yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, but I do think like oh yeah it is it is uh Maybe you needed more space. Maybe you need to take a separate piece of paper out. Um, but yeah, I, I would just, I'd be curious, you know, if anyone wants to, to reach out and share what this process was like for them. You know, did you, did you go with all positive stuff? Did you write something like, you know, well, he was a poor, miserable sinner who blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, was it kind of like a good balance? I don't know. What, yeah, what was, what was your approach to this um there was one and they give you some some guidance for you know maybe some prompts for what to write about yeah there was one <clears throat> um growth um no i i went with the the positive and negative and like mm-hmm. kind of showing faults and how Holy Spirit has worked and so mm-hmm. kind of talking about Peter it's kind of like that of yeah Peter's feelings but God re- restoring and working mm-hmm. through yeah. yeah that's kind of the approach that I took mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah it is you know we, we don't get we don't get Peter like talking in the scripture we don't get Peter talking about himself mm-hmm. very much um you get Paul talking about himself, though. Yeah, it's, you know, a lot. You know, I mean, d- talking about his back. I mean, chiefly, I'm, he talks about the chief of sinners. He t- he does talk about his his past, but um, what he's gone through. Yeah, what he's gone through. I I do think though there is something to be said for why while the Christian, obviously, we we have a story of that includes <laughs> sin <laughs> and rescue from sin. And then, you know, and we'll get there eventually, but sanctification, you know, God working through us, you know, fruit of the Spirit and everything. Um, I guess, like, yeah, I, I didn't feel the need to just, you know, only say, list off all of my character flaws mm-hmm. <laughs> or my failures. Because I do think that there is a sense wh- where when we are living that new life, I think I think it's, it's good. I know I always think about it, like, with a funeral, and I, I always think, feel like a good funeral eulogy or whatever the term you want to use it, it I mean obviously it should contain something about Jesus um, but it it's really a way to tell God's story by telling the story of one of his people mm-hmm. so I think you know you can I, I don't I'm not I'm not uncomfortable with listing off some of like the achievements accomplishments you know the fruit that was that was born out in someone's life um, as long as it's you know framed, and I think most people get it that it's framed that this is, you know, after <laughs> after the salvation has come into mm-hmm. my life. So I'm really boasting, I think, in Christ and Him crucified by by saying, "Look at what God has permitted for me to do." Like you know, it's a, any good any good that came from Jeff Smith 
is solely <laughs> by the grace of God. So I guess maybe that some of that stuff is just implicit, but maybe it should be made explicit more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it, it did it did make me think, and maybe you know some of you guys, maybe you just hated this one because it's morbid and you just thought it was yucky and you didn't even want to engage with it. But I think it's it's a it's a good um, exercise to be thinking of. Oh yeah, what what would someone say about me about my life? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is different. I think, especially you know, I know I know you've done a lot more than than me, but as people who have written eulogies, funeral mm-hmm. sermons, like, yeah, it just, yeah, it was weird to turn that in a little bit and mm-hmm. look at yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure that somebody has written their own funeral sermon and had somebody else preach it. Like, oh, definitely, it's had to have happened. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I'm sure that's happened too. Well. I, I did one time. I did get uh, someone gave me a sermon to preach. Really? Did yeah. you do it? Um, I did part of it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it was very long. <laughs> Hopefully, it wasn't just a list of their accomplishments. It was. Know. Yeah, I've, I've already said too much, but yeah, okay. <laughs> it did happen one time. Um, yeah, I have thought about that though before. Like, yeah, what are what are they gonna, you know? Some some pastor who hasn't even been born yet. Like, what is that? What is that guy going to say about me <laughs> at my funeral? <laughs> who knows? Uh, day eight. <clears throat> big deal or or no big deal? This one, this is probably the one so far that just has fascinated me the most, or just made me think the most, I guess. Um, and basically, the the question is, you know, do we? Do we make too big of a deal out of sin, or do we not make a big enough deal? So do we do we minimize sin? That's eh, not that bad. Or do we like elevate sin? Um, now we probably do both because we might minimize some sins, mm-hmm. but then other sins are like, oh, well, if you've done that, there's no way God could possibly love you ever again. Um, and we might we also might apply these categories or <laughs> judgments differently to other people than we do to ourselves mm-hmm. too. Um, so I don't know, you know, Pastor, what what uh, reactions or thoughts did you have from this day? Yeah, I, I would agree that this day was the one that stood out to me the most, and like uh, kind of what I was talking about earlier with, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, you you can listen to one of my sermons and be able to tell I'm very emotionally driven at how I operate, and so this really did speak to me because, like, you know, what sins do I feel most guilt over was one of the questions. Mm-hmm. And it's like ones that I know I've hurt somebody or, you know, like, like ones that are like high spikes of emotion, mm-hmm. but you know, telling a lie that, you know, doesn't necessarily hurt somebody. Like I don't feel guilt over that. And just, you know, I really like this because it just is that reminder mm-hmm. of all sins are equal. And I think this is something that my group talked about last week, mm-hmm. just as Everybody in the group last week who was there had been lifelong Christians. And so, like, Mm -hmm. we all know that we're sinners and that Jesus forgives us. But then it's like, well, how does that play out? Because, you know, it's it's almost like you either get into the, when you like, when we do confession, I, a poor, miserable sinner, you either fixate on that too much and that's, you know, one problem, or it's just like, I know the end. I know I'm forgiven. And so it's like your sin doesn't hurt as much. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, you know, it's just made me think of like how we should really hate our sin. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like it, it, we sh- it should grieve us when we miss the mark, yeah. you know. And um, something else that came up in conversation was just like with this of minimizing different sins. It's, mm-hmm. You know, Zach uses this illustration of, of shooting a bullseye and it's like some targets we make bigger and we move closer yeah. and it's like oh I can hit that target real easily mm-hmm. and everybody does that you know like oh well this isn't a big deal like but we're not necessarily aiming at the right target of what mm-hmm. God wants for us and so yeah yeah I, I threw out a lot there but this one really similar yeah. to you stood out to me uh, a lot yeah you know, I, yeah, I've been wrestling with this because I, I, I think I, well, I do agree, obviously, 
that's it's it's what the Bible says that all sins in the eyes of God, you know, they if you have committed one, you're guilty of everything, you're you're damned, you know, if, if without Jesus. But but then on the other hand, I think it's just common sense that some sins do cause more damage in this life and greater consequences and you know, it's probably fitting to have earthly punishments, you know, more for, you know, some violent crime than for, yeah, like, you know, telling a lie to your children or something, mm -hmm. um, which I still shouldn't, you know, don't condone that, but... <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but we all understand yeah, it. But we, <laughs> yeah, but, but I, then I, you know, I, so I've been, I've been like all over the map on this one, but I'm just kind of wondering, yeah, is there any fruit for... Christians to even attempt to like rank sins or whatever like it just I, I, I don't I don't know I mean I, I mean you know in counseling someone they might come in and tell you oh like these four things are going on in my life we might be like well the, this one you need to get you know need to get in um, to fix this one first because it's like doing the most damage to your family or to other people or something but um, but I do think we I don't know I think we get bogged down and that's not that we have official ranking lists but we definitely, I mean, there there are some there are some sins out there that the church kind of as a whole kind of communicates like, yeah, God, like there's no way that God could ever like love you if you're doing that. Like we just like write people off that are engaging in certain things. Like we always say, well, well, God can forgive anything, but then I think like practically speaking, we're like, but probably not you mm -hmm. for that one. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I um, uh, song comes to mind. Uh, it's called "Jesus, Friend of Sinners" by Casting Crowns, mm -hmm. and it talks about um, you know holding. Up, I can't remember the exact lines, but like you know, people are we're holding up signs that say "sinner" and we're not able to to even talk to, to people who it's uh, yeah, about the gospel and it's like we mm -hmm. just get so caught up on oh man you've done this or you support this and it's like mm -hmm. that should be the end of the story and it it is tough right because I think you know two that are the ones that always come to the top of the list when this kind of conversation homosexuality and abortion right mm -hmm. we would say like we believe God's word that says those things are wrong mm -hmm. and but it's like in a world that those things are towards the top of, you know, most divisive and, you know, most prominent. How do we, how do we uphold that, mm -hmm. but also show compassion? And yeah. that is, I mean, if you have an answer to that, by yeah. all means, well, like, and, and that's, that's kind of how he finishes this day is, you know, the tension we face in this world is not to minimize sin and also not to minimize grace. We must call out sin and talk about its consequences it absolutely has to be dealt with, which is why we're spending considerable time understanding the seriousness of sin. At the same time, we must also comprehend the greatness of God's grace. Um, sin is a big deal. God's grace is a bigger deal. Yeah, there's uh, there's so much there. I think this is still this is the one that I'm this you know, until there's another day that comes that's more challenging. I guess that I'm still chewing on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think yeah, like you're kind of alluding to. I don't think anyone's gonna solve this perfectly, but we're we're all trying. <laughs> yeah, we're all trying and to I, do it. I do yeah. think think that this can give good growth to people who attempt to do that because I think mm -hmm. what it also ultimately has come from is seeing ourselves as no greater than anyone else and mm -hmm. realizing that we are we're sinners too in need of the same yeah. exact grace and because mm -hmm. I, I think. You know, and you can be genuine, and still somebody might say, "You're just being hateful because you disagree with me," and you yeah. can't, you truly can't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. like, That's true. Yeah. But like, how often is it that we come at it from maybe good intentions but not good execution? Mm -hmm. And you know, but when we truly do, as Paul says, see ourselves as the chief of sinners, mm -hmm. like you know, we're pointing to. This great grace that hey, I need it no just um, as much as you. Like mm -hmm. I'm no better than you. And yeah. if we can really 
tap into that and really mm -hmm. uh, show that love, I think that's mm -hmm. the best chance that we have of even having yeah. a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think, and we actually have to believe it too. We yeah. actually have to believe that we're the chief of sinners, yeah. that, that we are no better than, than someone who is currently outside of, it's not of God's grace. Yeah. Especially because like the message of the church, like you said, doesn't say these sins are worse, but mm -hmm. in practice, yeah, it's yeah. easy to, to walk away from church culture or how the church is perceived and say, mm -hmm. well, they clearly just hate gay people and want to control people's bodies. You know, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. Homosexuality and abortion, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and so it is, it is tough to, to mm -hmm. really see yourself as yeah. the chief of sinners. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And, and I think, and there, there definitely are approaches less on like you know again here's here's minimizing certain sins but like on smaller topics about sin that I think you you can engage people and just kind of talk about you know well are are people basically good or are people basically bad or you know what kind of you know you can kind of start to talk about some of those things and I think any reasonable person will admit that yeah like I I think terrible things sometimes Oh yeah, sometimes I say I say, I say some bad things to people. If I don't, oh yeah, sure I've done bad stuff like mm -hmm. Tuesday or <laughs> yeah. when I was in high school or you know whatever. Yeah, um, I think maybe you don't have to just start debating about whatever the the biggest ticket social or moral issue of that decade happens to be. Right, because, <laughs> you know, like right out the gate at least. Yeah. Because then it does that that perpetuates how it the perception of you're just mm -hmm. picking on specific sins. Yeah, and yeah, so. yeah, and 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 there there are definitely sins that I think the church sometimes yeah just kind of turns a blind eye toward, or they're just more they're like ah it's not that bad, you know ah you know we're just not going to condemn that one yeah. as much. Homosexuality is bad. Yeah. Divorce, well, yeah, we don't like it, but you know it mm -hmm. is what it is. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. that's. They're all sins. Yeah, they, they, they are. They are, yeah. Speaking of that, day nine is the one where I think everyone, if, if you hadn't, if you hadn't uh, believed that you were a sinner yet, day nine and day 10, so, you know, kind of leave no doubt. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if, as long as you're approaching this honestly. So day nine, yeah, it brings up this, this concept of law and gospel, which is at the very center of Lutheran teaching. It's, you know, what we say the Bible is about, the two main teachings of the Bible. The law shows our sin. The gospel shows uh, our Savior. You know, the law tells us you're a sinner. There's no way you can save yourself. The gospel says, yeah, there's no way you can save yourself. But God has done everything necessary for you to be saved. Believe in Jesus and you're in, you know. Um, and uh, he has this one quote. Well, yeah. Well, the, on page sixty-three, a couple of good quotes. They even underline the good quotes well, for you already. Yeah. Uh, the purpose of the law, therefore, is to bring us to our knees and put us in a place where we are ready to receive the gospel. We touched on that at the start of this uh, study here today. You really, you don't truly receive the gospel until you are made aware of your need for it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Jesus is just some guy that has some cool quotes and. You know, yeah, I was kind of kind of a nice hippie teacher kind of guy, and yeah, I might put a couple of his quotes on my wall or something. But mm -hmm. until you realize he came to save your <laughs> to save your body and your soul mm -hmm. for eternity, because you you were going to die. Um, but I don't know if there's anything else. I, I certainly uh, did not enjoy the challenge on um, on day nine. The sin test, having to mark yes or no to all of these things, and and I know you know. I think, without revealing too many of my answers, I think if you if you answered if you didn't answer at least a few of them, yes, I don't think you were being honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, if not the majority of them, yes. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I'll just read through a, a couple of these. You know, just, have you ever lusted after something or someone that wasn't yours? Do you have anything in your life that you regret? 
You know, do you have anything in your life that you're constantly ashamed of? So these are more general. Then, then it gets very specific. Um, and then, then it asks you, what emotions are you experiencing right now? And, you know, I think that's, that, obviously that's a deeply personal thing, but I think it, while it's personal and, and individual, probably there was a great unity in how we felt, I think, going through this chapter, even though we probably not a lot of us discussed it very willingly with our mm-hmm. with our friends and neighbors. But I feel like this one did bring us into the same space and prepared us to really, really want to hear the gospel. And good thing he had three awesome gospel laden verses mm-hmm. for us to look at right below. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Pastor Josh, whatever you want to say. You know about this about this challenge. Um, I don't know. I, I think you you said you said my thoughts exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I I really I don't know. I I chose the the verse that I really chose to to reflect upon of the three that choices was the Romans five eight. You know, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, and I think that's something that will never get old and something that we need to remind ourselves all the time that it really, really, really is not the case that you have to get to a certain level of goodness Mm -hmm. before God will accept you. Like Christ was willing to die for us when we were at our very worst, like farthest away from him. Mm -hmm. Um, That's, that's his love. So we have the, the sin test here. This is there is a distinction uh, between sins. You know, there's so there are sins of commission, sins that you actually like actively commit, and then there's sins of omission. And these are ones that you know where, oh, God gave you an opportunity to do something and you just didn't do it. Um, and I think you know maybe we try to wriggle our way out of this, like oh well I didn't know, you know I didn't I wasn't paying attention or something, but. Um, in my experience, there's been a lot of times my sins of omission, I feel like I have a pretty active role in them, where it's like, I see I see that I could do something there, and I just like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. I think I'm good. I think it is easier to, you know, I, I just think of, of in First John, uh, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves yeah. in the truth and in the uh-huh. I think sins of omission is definitely easier to deceive ourselves because, you know, we might feel the consequences of the sins that we commit. Mm-hmm. You know, you say something mean to somebody, yeah. well, they're not going to talk to you. You feel mm-hmm. the consequences, whereas sins of omission are like, well, you didn't do it, so you don't necessarily have the this action, this is the outcome. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's different, and so it can be yeah. easier to say, well... Should I have done something? Maybe, but did I have to? No. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I really think, you know, this is one of those things where we, we realize that God has written his law on our hearts, you know, AKA our conscience. And, you know, not that this is the only way that we, that we uh, have, that we know if we should do something or not, but I think it's a very good uh, standard of, do I feel wrong Mm -hmm. you know you pass somebody by who is homeless and we all have there are some times where like you know you you wonder okay is this really you know is this person really in need or not Mm -hmm. but then there are some times where like maybe you feel a little bit of a tug on your heart Mm -hmm. I put that conscience there for a reason like you know whenever your conscience is is troubled like you should do something about it and so I just think you know, uh, it, again, not that that's the only standard because even our consciences can be suppressed mm-hmm. and and can oh, yeah. be malfunctioning. Mm-hmm. But if you ignore it long enough, it yeah. kind of stops working. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. But I do think that that is uh, that is a, a factor in you know, should I do this? Am I mm-hmm. called to do this? Is this a sin if I don't do this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think I do think there there is a scenario where you could go overboard mm-hmm. 
and really beat yourself up unnecessarily, I think. Because I, I was, and, and I think I'm trying, I'm still trying to discern because like when I did this one today, I thought, how could I do all of these things? You know, so there's a little bit of like hard heartedness there, but then also that really shouldn't be my reaction. We should be like, well, I'm not doing enough of these things. I don't have to help everyone in the entire world, mm -hmm. um, nor would that be possible, but what what can I do? So I think, yeah, sometimes it's not always like, oh, I have to discern exactly what the right ones is. Just like, just pick, just yeah. pick, a, pick a few of the options. Yeah, God's going to give you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, there's a, there are unlimited choices, really. Uh, just, just pick something, yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I do think that a lot of times the sins of commission get the, you know, again, are we going to elevate or minimize some? I think the sins of, of commission will get played up as being worse. They're bigger punishments in, in civil this world. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, you, you can kind of get away with sins of omission and not always have that many repercussions, at least, like, yeah, in this life. Yeah. Um, but the thing that, that I was thinking about, too, was, you know, we have Matthew 25 and this story that Jesus tells about, you know, Judgment Day, the sheep and the goats, and what does he list off? Like, what are all of the things that he's convicting the the goats of? Like, they're they're like they're all sins of omission. I never thought about. That. Yeah, he's like they're all neglecting. You know, the the sheep, the the righteous on the right hand side, are all like, Lord, when did we see you sick or hungry or naked and you know give you what you needed? And then he's like, oh, you know, whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me. And then the the hard hearted unrighteous ones are like, Jesus, we never saw you doing. You know, we. But he's saying, yeah, yeah, you you neglected to do all of these things, and that's that's where your guilt is. So that's uh, packs a little more punch, I think, for this one. And and yeah, I think we should. I think it's it's okay for us to feel a little beat up um, here as we are most of the way through the week of sin. But it is uh, a blessing that we have little nuggets of gospel each day too mm -hmm. all the while it's not like he's yeah. saying I'm withholding the gospel till day 20 or that something would be rough. <laughs> that would be really rough yeah I think people would drop out yeah I think so too yeah well it'd be like if we you know some weeks we're like yeah I don't know I think you guys have all been really naughty we're just going to do the confession we're going to skip the absolution today yeah <laughs> you know this is just going to be a, a confessional service um, yeah but I, I, I hope that this book so far I hope maybe just our, our conversation today has been a, a blessing for you too to kind of supplement our our reading it, it's really I always get excited about these when we do like a everyone in the congregation doing the same thing um, yeah I just I just feel like oh yeah we're all we're all walking through this together I'm not the only one that feels like garbage after day <laughs> nine <No. laughs> um, you know and and the gospel of Jesus I I pray is is being loved and rejoiced over all the more here at St. Paul because we're we're doing this challenge. So next week, well, I mean, starting this weekend, we're gonna we're gonna shift in from the week of sin to the week of confession as we go through the scars, mm -hmm. S C confession, and uh, I guess I'm preaching on that. So hopefully, you get, hopefully you're ready. Uh, hopefully I'm ready. Yeah, and then you you've got the next one, I think, right? You've got the A, the absolution. So I'll try to set the table for you to, to preach us a good thing about absolution but yeah keep on reading you know remember if if for some reason you've fallen behind or even if you've you're like I haven't even started you know maybe I I just got the book or or whatever just start just start right now start with whatever day it is you know um, actually it's it's nice here in March we started on March 1st so day one was March 1st so whatever day of the month of March it is you know that's what day we're on so you don't have to check some some kind of a schedule so whatever day of March you're like, oh I'll just dive in and and uh, and God's gonna bless that you know you can read the other days some other time over the summer it's maybe. kind of crazy how that lined up I know that's yeah it was really a, it was really a complete accident as far as <laughs> I'm concerned <laughs> yeah but, uh, but thanks for joining us, yeah, and we'll look forward to talking with you next time here with our Bible study and seeing you in worship here this weekend.